Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to the Fantasy Forecast for Wednesday, March 16th, 2016. We have a nice nine-game slate coming on up here, so let's get right on into it. Um, I've been talking before to you guys about proper breading strategy on a large game slate. Your lowest cashing lanes, or games, quite obviously, are going to be on cash games and 50-50 games. So if you're looking for the lowest cashing line tonight and you want to make some money, look at the 50-50 single entries and look at the, you know, you can always play a $1 GPP or a $2 GPP as a lottery ticket, but the 50-50 single entries, the single entry double ups, those are going to be your best cashing lines tonight. Okay, moving on, guys. Um, this is the Roto Wire lineup. Oh, and real fast for results for yesterday, I'm not going to go through everyone else's. My optimal cash lineup gave a 312. Not bad on a, on a tough night. It actually won GPPs as well if you played it that way. Well, um, I don't normally recommend that on a cash lineup, but, you know, short slate. You guys have the choices to do what you want to do, and on the shorter slate, sometimes playing those GPPs will pay more. So, good job for you guys that took it. Okay. So, uh, point guard, Collison and Felton. Shot guard, Harden and Depot. Small forward, Fournier and Barnes. Power forward, Davis and Gibson. And center, Drummond. And Roto Grinders is projecting this at 310. Uh, 311 if you round off, but 310.5. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to Roto Wire. Roto-Wire today has Thomas and Jennings in the point guard, Bradley and Matthews in the shot guard, James and Anthony in the small forward, Davis and Ibaka at power forward, and Jefferson for center. Okay. Moving on from there, this is Fantasy Pros, and I included them for two reasons, guys. This is their optimal lineup, but if you go on their website, you can do a few interesting things for free that most others can't. They have Jackson and Westbrook at the point guard, Stevenson and Beal at the shot guard, Rudy Gay and Durant at small forward, Love and Collie Stein at power forward, and center Jefferson. I've mentioned over and over I don't particularly enjoy the Jefferson pick. So what I went ahead and did is I hit the exclude button on this one and I created a brand new lineup without him. And watch what happens. Oh, by the way, that one was projected at 291. This is only projecting at 290. But it kind of plays the players a little bit more like the way I, you would have thought they should be played. You have Jackson and Jennings. You have Beal and Matthews, and you would have to watch Beal and make sure he plays. Um, injury locks are going to be very important today on the 7 o'clock game, guys. Watch it carefully. Um, New Orleans, obviously, if Norris Cole comes back in, it's going to hurt value on some of the cheap New Orleans players, especially Tony Douglas. But if he doesn't play, Douglas becomes a good play. So, And you'll know that news before lock. It's something to watch. Um, shot guard, Beal and Matthews. Small forward, James and Gay. Power forward, Davis and Love, and center, Drummond. And again, that was the Fantasy Pros lineup after I told them I do not like Jefferson. And it allowed, it created a new one based off it. Um, you can somewhat do the same things on RotoQL, guys. This is the RotoQL optimal lineup for today. Or, actually, I'm sorry. Um, this is, um, is it? Yeah, this is the RotoQL lineup for today. Okay, so we have Kemba Walker and Isaiah Thomas at the point guard, Depot and Allen at shot guard, Fournier and Wiggins at small forward, Nowitzki and Sullinger at power forward, and Cantor for center. And they're projecting this at 322, guys. Now, you can play with Roto QL in the same way and change good only to game time decision and come up with something a little bit different if you guys like their app. This also came from Roto QL and it was free. This one is Isaiah Thomas and Rubio at point guard, Depot and Caldwell Pope at shot guard, Fournier and Wiggins at small forward, Nowitzki and Millsap at power forward, and Canner for the center. 
and the last one projected at 322 and this one only projects at 321. Now real fast I'm going to go ahead and go through my cache entry but I'm going to modify one of these other entries down here real fast. I don't know which one to do. I guess I'll modify this first one because I can change it again. Guys, I forgot to show you Daily Fantasy Cafe for today, and it was an interesting one, so I'm going to go ahead and just do it real fast for you. We'll clear the whole lineup, and we'll just add them all in. They have Westbrook, and they have Smart in the point guard position. Shot guard, they have Levine and Harden. Small forward, they have Miritic and Gay. And watching those Bulls players today, guys, could be a good move. I mean, they, they will get extra time if, you know, Rose sits and things like that. I mean, they've been pretty injury-plagued, but they're, they're back and forth. Butler just came in back when, when last night, and so some of these other value plays on Chicago may start to lose minutes. It all depends on what the situation is over there. Okay, at small forward, they had um, Miritic and Gay. Sorry, I missed Gay. There we go. At power forward, they had Stevenson and Harris. Stevenson is a cheapie. He's around 3700 I believe, yeah. Harris is more expensive. Harris ranked 658 I missed 33 See, this is what happens when you don't do it on the fly, guys, and you plan to try to help you guys out, and you miss one. Save those changes. And that lineup should just go right up to the top now. There we go. Okay, so, and then this was Daily Fantasy Cafe, guys. Daily Fantasy Cafe is Westbrook Smart at point guard, Levine and Harden at shot guard, Miritic and Gay at small forward, Harris and Stevenson at power forward, and center Drummond. Let me go to my ideal cash entry for today, guys. My ideal day cash entry for today is along these lines, and I'll explain these picks now. Okay, Tony Douglas, um, you're going to need to watch the Norris Cole news. This should make sense to you guys. If Norris Cole sits, Tony Douglas is going to get a lot of run just like he has in the previous games. It's just going to happen. At 4500 you'll get your value compared to paying up for a Westbrook or something like that. Similar situation with Collison. You're also noticing that I'm aiming for the game that's supposed to be relatively even, only with a two, three point spread, and as a 220 over under. We like choosing games like that. It makes sense for fantasy scoring, I've mentioned many times. I have Levine against Memphis today. Memphis finally showed the JV team they were yesterday, and that dunk, those dunking skills, and the, they give him enough ball handling used on the court where I think Levine's posed for a really good day. He should give you six times today if my projections are right. Maybe even a touch more. Clay Thompson is a touch iffy, but I'm running on that super high score they're projecting. They're projecting that again at 220, and again, it's got a bit of a blowout risk. It's like a 15, 20 point spread. But Clay is still going to see some time. They're going to sit Curry. They might sit Thompson later, but Curry will be the first to sit. And I'm thinking Thompson will end up getting enough points off that in that high scoring game where he's going to give you value. And I'm looking for value. I'm looking for high scoring. That's the whole point of cash. Moving on to Durant, same type of thing. I mean, I could have had Westbrook, but Westbrook doesn't fit when you have value choices at center, and there aren't as many value choices at power forward. So I'll spend up right here and get Durant. And, you know, he hasn't given us the best performances lately, but it's a high scoring game, so we could potentially see a 55, 60 point performance from him. He certainly shows that ceiling more than many times. Babbitt, again, another interesting call. You're waiting on the news on Norris Cole sitting. If Cole sits, Babbitt's most likely starting again in the lineup and everything's good. Cole could throw everything off. We don't know if it would be Douglas or Babbitt that would sit, and in either case, he'd probably pull some minutes from each. Um, you're really looking at that Norris Cole news. Um, it, and, and you're not going to get it before lock, it looks like. It, it, this is a little bit of a tough one. I would play that he's out. He's missed four games, and he's still questionable this morning, but we don't have news on it, guys, so this could be a touch of a gamble. And there are ways I've shown you how to build cash lineups avoiding that. You can certainly go around the Oklahoma City game and Boston game. That's a high-scoring game as well, and it's supposed to be relatively close. You have a couple high-scoring game options tonight. Moving on from Babbitt, 
We've got Davis and Ibaka. Davis, again, uh, the Pelicans don't have much, and someone's going to score. And it, when Vegas says it's close, I like Davis. Probably your best upside play at high dollar like, that you're going to find. Okay, um, we have Ibaka. Again, another high-scoring game. Supposed to be close, so let's just go for some extra points there, above average. And Drummond. Drummond has been hurt a couple times lately because he hasn't seen good fantasy scoring. I think people will be off him and the price has dropped. But the man can collect rebounds like no other. And this is a team that will give up boards. So I'm feeling that it's, this is the night Drummond has a bit of a resurgence. Now, I'm not expecting you guys to see 55 points from him, but I'm pretty solid he hits his floor of 40 tonight. I mean, the floor has been moving down with his latest performances, but his regular floor of 40 looks pretty certain. Okay, so that's my cash lineup for today. And real fast, we're going to go on settled results and explain yesterday what we were talking about. Now, you'll see we have 313, you know. I have many of these scores that were on optimals, and they would have been winning if you guys know. But let's go to where I actually was playing and show the entries themselves. Now, in the number one SWAT, remember how I said in a low-scoring thing, that the cashing lines are a little bit lower, right? Okay, so the cashing line here was, I paid it 304, but it was 300.5. Move up to just $2, which is a little bit more expensive. Remember, the more expensive they get, the harder it is to cash. 304, but cashing was 303. And I talked to people that were in leagues last night and everything else. Cashing lines were 307, 316 as soon as it got higher up to hit in the higher dollar ones. Um, the double up line was around 200 and uh, I'll give me a second and I can actually confirm what that power line was for you. But I mean it was not entirely uh, great. Um, let's see here. Cashing line was... Uh, I keep on going through here. Here we go. Okay, so cashing lines last night on the NBA double ups for single entry were 297, slightly lower than the GPP scores, which was at 300, just slightly lower on the regular double ups. And these are single entry double ups. The bigger double up was probably a little bit higher, probably around that 303 line. A single entry dribbler. 304 wasn't enough. Single entry on the $2, you needed 307.5. Single entries on GPPs are tougher to hit because you don't have other people entering the lottery tickets that are going to cushion your free roll. So remember that, guys. There's smart betting strategy with everything. On a big slate light tonight, you're really going to want to focus no matter what you do is if you head into this lobby and you go ahead and you make a bet, you know, and you want to go for the big money because you want to play with the lottery ticket, go for it. A dollar to win a hundred, or two dollars of two twenty-five in prizes, top prize is fifteen grand. I think top prize in this one is ten grand. Those are wonderful paydays. You're gonna need a higher score to cash them though. So if you bet your one dollar or your two dollar, head on over to fifty fifty and play one of these single entries. And you'll see them. The $1 are the best. The cheapest still have the lower lines. And it says max entries right there, 1. You want to have one max entry before you enter into it. Because if you play a multi-entry game, and I'm going to show that to you now, that's where it gets harder to win. These are double-up games. But they have a big one with almost 20,000 entries. And you can enter it 250 times. There are a lot of people that do enter it 100 times, 200 times, and go to cash that double-up lineup and go 200 for 400. And they do it on this big one thinking there's a lot of smaller people cushioning. Don't be one of those guys. Go into these ones right here where it says it's only one entry is allowed. You're going to find it's a lot easier to pick up some money on those ones. The cashing lines are slightly lower. All right, moving back. Let's go back over to my cash entry for today. My recommended cash is... Tony Douglas, New Orleans on sack. Again, a high-scoring game, relatively projected to be even. Collison on sack, same type of thing. Levine on Memphis. We're playing that Memphis is going to finally keep showing their true colors, and Levine's going to have himself a nice night in comparison to his regular scoring. Thompson gets all his points, basically, in that high-scoring game, even though it's a somewhat of a blowout. They're going to be watching Curry. Melo's probably going to be like trying to run after Curry in some way, shape, or form, and it's going to leave stuff open for Clay everywhere. Durant on Boston, 
I mean, you, you can spend high money somewhere, and why wouldn't you take that high-scoring game and go with that man? I mean, Westbrook and Durant kind of trade off on who gets it better, and it, it could be Westy tonight, but you have choices at point guard, and you join it small forward, so it made it easy for me. Babbitt, again, like Tony Douglas up there, make sure Norris Cole is sitting out, and these New Orleans triple stack is going to work just fine for you. Davis, someone's got to put the points up against Sacramento. That's the case for Boogie but the bottom at center, but if Boogie gives you 55, 57 points, and Drummond can still give you 45 at that much lower price, there's a price where you have to look at, like, can I trade out a high-dollar player and get someone a little bit better? And th that could exist for Davis at 10-1. It definitely could have existed for Durant. I mean, Fournier still looks very strong, um, So, and he's almost half the price. And you could use those savings to move up somewhere else. You could move up to a Harden at shot guard or something. Like, I've told you guys how to do lineup buildings. But this is my ideal recommended cash lineup for today. Like I said, yesterday's ideal recommended cash lineup came in at a 312. If you're interested in other results or in exact specifics, send me a tweet or leave a message here, and I'll be happy to email it to you or get it over to you somehow. Otherwise, I want you guys all to go out there, have a wonderful day, and go win some money.